Hey, how's it going? And today I thought it'd be fun to just make some basic basic bouncing ball. I think this has a lot of applications for things. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. So we're in Unreal Engine 5 right now. And this is just going to be a blank game with no starter content as a blueprint. And so we just go, I'll just call this ball, ball 11 or 12. And we'll go create. Just takes a minute for this to come up and I'm hoping to do at least one or two tutorials a week and hopefully within the next three or four months we'll have a pretty good understanding of Unreal Engine. So now we're in the game, the template. Of course we've got this landscape that we can look at here. Sun, nice looking little landscape. So all we're going to do is we're going to right click in the content browser and we're going to go to blueprint class actor now this is interesting because these parent classes shows you the hierarchy of everything of what's what and maybe not listed here is what would be called an object and that is basically a base class for any object so that kind of sits above i believe all these other classes so everything kind of derives from another thing they all inherit functionality from each other so anyway an actor is kind of a generic thing so anyway we can just go blueprint bp Ball. There's naming conventions that you sh should eventually learn so that when you're naming something, you'll be able to find it easy among your projects. Now we'll just double click this and we're going to go ahead and dock this to our window. And again, anytime you see that asterisk, it means it's not, nothing's been saved. So to get started on this, we're just going to go to the default scene route and we're going to add a static mesh. And it's very important to be a static mesh and not this sphere. And then we can call this ball and then we got that so now if we compile and save it and double click on it i think i might have killed my hold on ball window here i think i need my details panel okay so right now it doesn't really exist as anything so we're going to come over here and go to editor sphere search for that if I could type editor sphere this one right here you can just pick any material that you want I'm just I'll just pick this basic one right there and again we can compile and save and then that there's our ball right there so that pretty much takes care of this so so all of our work is done in this section now we can just jump over into the event graph and we can right left click and drag and just delete all this stuff we don't really need the details panel anymore everything is pretty much going to be default settings so all i have to do is uh, right click and we're going to add a timeline and this will all be functioning through this ball will be bouncing in large part due to the the timeline we'll just leave it at the default name now if we double click on this it takes us into the timeline editor we're going to add three tracks the first one we're going to add is an event track and i'll just call this hit ground and that's all that we got we don't even have to do anything else for that we can, in fact we can go ahead and minimize this one thing we need to do though is turn on auto play and uh, loop Th those need to be on okay and then we're going to go to and then this way when we hit play in the game it'll just automatically start bouncing then we're going to add a float track and we're going to call this one movement and here we're going to add some keyframes now we're going to go ahead and set the the length of this to three seconds and if I hit the scroll wheel, I can see the whole thing here. And you can see this is a, our time scale. And then here we go. If I click right here, right click here, I can add a keyframe. And then I come back to the halfway mark, a minute, a uh, second and a half. I'm going to right click and add another keyframe. Now it goes in a straight line and that tells us that we're in, in linear. So if I, if I left click, I can select both of these come here right click i can set it to auto and then we want more of this kind of bezier bezier curve like that and then i'm going to right click again right here right next to that one and come right over here in the corner at the three second mark up high at the near one and add another curve and again i can right click there i can just make that curve like that so that takes care of our movement now we're just going to add one more track 
a float track and we're gonna call this one size and we're just gonna go along this line right here and I'm gonna right click and add a, add a keyframe add a keyframe I'm just right clicking add a keyframe add a keyframe add a keyframe and you can experiment with these a little later as time goes by but I'm gonna drag this right about this is gonna make the ball contort in size you'll see here in a minute and I'm just going to then left click and select all these and we're gonna make them auto and then I'm just gonna pull this well, deselect I clicked away from them. I'm just gonna drag this one up here about like that and if I want to smooth these curves out I can you know grab these handles and do that uh, but I think that's good enough for purposes right now. And then go compile and save. Now if we go back into the event graph, you'll see that it's added, hit ground here, and movement and size here. So now we just gotta hook up a few things. We're about halfway done right now, so hopefully it's not taking too long. From the update, we're gonna left click and drag out, and we're going to search, we're gonna turn off context sensitive that's real important and we're going to search lerp lerp and this is basically going to interplate the values that we put into it so we're going to for this is default default except here on the b on the z we're going to make that 500 now we're going to right click duplicate this and drag this down here and this is going to be for the size and here i'm going to type in 0.5 tab 0.5 tab 0.5 there on the A and on the B we're going to type 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and 0.2. Okay, and that takes care of that. And then so I'm going to drag these just a little bit closer and I'm going to put movement into this top one and size into this bottom one like that. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for set relative location right here. I got messed up because I was searching for get relative location. <laughs> now this is our execution path, so we're going to drag this in. I realize this is a little bit like monkey see, monkey do, but I figure once you know how this to set this up, then you can go back in the documentation and read everything more detail about what's doing what. But this is basically just controlling the size of our movements and stuff. So anyway, the motion and our scale. Now I'm going to right click again and I want to get, let's see here, uh, set relative scale 3D. So set to scale through this one right here and then after the location is done then we're going to set our size so we click drag that into there it doesn't go anywhere from there and then this return value goes into here and this return value goes into here and we're almost done we're on the home stretch our target's going to be our ball which is over here so we'll plug that at the very last and the last thing that i'm just right clicking and dragging up now the last thing we're going to get is spawn. I just have to check my notes. I can't remember. Spawn emitter at location. There we go. And there's that one. And then we're going to drag hit ground into here, which will trigger that. And then the last thing is, I think we can get it from here. Believe it or not, we're pretty much done. We just got to hook up the ball as a target. So we're going to drag this on, get ball. And from here, I'm going to type in get world location right there and type plug this into the value there. Then I'm going to drag the ball over here, get ball, and I'm going to plug it into here. And then I'm going to get the ball, drag it in over here, get ball, and plug that into there. And as far as I know, I'm just double checking. I think that's everything. So let's compile and save and we didn't get any errors. That's good. That's always a good thing. Now we're going to come into our scene and here's our blueprint. So the beauty of a class is that when you drag it onto the scene, it's creating an instance of that. So from this class, this parent class, you can 
create innumerable children or instances of it. So if I did everything right, if we drag this onto the scene, and I can pull it up a little bit, and I hit play, if the powers of Xandar are in alignment with Unreal, it should start bouncing. Otherwise, I'll start cussing. So we'll see what happens. So there it is. And you see when it hits, how it squishes a little bit? So you can go in and adjust, play around. It's see how it glitches a little bit there. I'm sure that's on the movement where there's that little break. But you can go in and play with the settings on the timeline and figure it out from there. So I think from here, you can figure out how to make the ball bounce. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I hope you found this helpful.